Welcome to Canadian Innovators, the show that celebrates innovation, entrepreneurs, and the Canadian spirit. I'm Jocelyn Bamford, and every week we introduce a new entrepreneur or expert in the economy to tell their stories and unpack the challenges of keeping jobs in Canada, as well as to discuss potential solutions for job growth and prosperity. Today on the program, we're going to step inside a manufacturing powerhouse in Ontario, Samco Machinery. Samco engineers and manufacturers role forming solutions to serve a wide range of industries around the globe. Joining us to give, a, give us a sneak peek behind the curtain is Bob Repose, President and CEO of Samco Machinery. Bob oversees a diverse team of 200 highly skilled individuals with 25 years of experience managing within engineered role forming solutions. He believes in embracing change and providing engineers engineer to order solutions specific to customer requirements. Bob joined Samco Machinery in 1997 and held various positions in quality and continuous improvement, human resources, sales, project management, and operations before taking over the reins in 2011. Welcome to the program, Bob. Hey, Jocelyn. Thank you very much. Good to be hey. here. So uh, we're excited to unpack the solutions that Samco has. Now, many of our viewers have no idea what a role former does. So can you walk us through this? Absolutely, of course. Uh, role forming basically takes a coil of steel or a sheet, a piece of sheet metal and puts it through a series of cold roll forming dies for various products like automotive, building construction, metal framing on there, roofing, siding and decking. So all from a coil of steel, garage doors, uh, racking and shelving as well. You go to a Home Depot, uh, grocery store, HVAC, appliances. So many industries, transportation and highway, guardrail, grain bins and storage. So all these start from a coil of steel and heavy gauge forming there as well, like for a rail car and so forth. So a lot of different products that you wouldn't realize how they begin. And um, there's another section of a uh, roll forming line there and how we're making the products. There's actually a shelf there being product produced. Uh, these are grain bin products with robotic arms and how we're putting those in stations and, and so forth. So a lot of automation on here, a lot of innovation being designed into the process. We can spin the process, the product as well, uh, flip the product, a lot of material handling and automation here, as you can see. Uh, this is an accumulator and an automotive rolling line right here, flyover, with a welded section being produced for an automotive car section. So all from coil, all through the forming process. Uh, there's a wrapper there for a HVAC, uh, sorry, for a uh, refrigerator panel and uh, steel framing line there as well, steel frame studs and so forth. So a lot of different products that you wouldn't realize how they begin and uh, all from coil. So we build the machines that are making those end products, just to be clear in this, in this case here. So these are all engineer to order, highly automated, um, a lot of intelligence into these products. So neat, so many different products. Now, um, walk us through uh, this slide. You talk about vertical integration. Tell us what that means and walk us through that slide. Yeah, exactly. Well, we were really speaking about the machinery division earlier. And, you know, over the years, we've really learned that we have to be a one stop shop for our customers. So over the years, we've also developed our rolling division where we actually have our roll formers in house so we can actually roll products uh, where the customer doesn't require to build an actual machine for them. We can manufacture the tooling for them and we can make the products. And as well, recently, we've added our fabrication division so we can make one product. Uh, there as well, where we have lasers and um, press brakes, and we're also CWB certified for welding. So with using all these divisions with machinery and, and rolling and fabrication, we are also able to utilize the shared resources and the knowledge that resists, exists within our teams and many years of experience. So you so can make those the parts divisions, or you can make the whole product. Is that correct? We can exactly we can right from one product, the end product for the customer to rolling the products where they don't have the volumes necessarily. And then we build the machinery as well. So over the years, 50 years, actually this year, um, we're able to say, you know, we're able to do all those things. And, and that's how we can really help service our customers because we don't want to say, no, we can't do it. You know, you don't have that kind of um, capital budget to just buy the machinery, but we also have the capabilities again. And you know, that just helps our business overall and how we innovate and how we, we can really utilize the resources in one facility 
with our engineers um, or, you know, mechanical, so, electrical, so and so forth. So fascinating products. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to hear the story of how Samco got started. We'll be right back on Canadian Innovators. Welcome back. You're watching Canadian Innovators. I have with me today Bob Repose from Samco Machinery. Bob, we, we saw what your products are and how you make them very interesting and innovative. But we'd love to hear about the story of Samco and how it gets started. So could you walk us through that? Sure. Well, what you saw there was 50 years of uh, lessons and learnings, but it didn't just start there. So um, proud to say I'm a second generation family business and my father started it 50 years ago, 1972, um, you know, came over from Europe as an immigrant and uh, it's a whole other story there, but he uh, came over as a young boy and um, learned his way to learn the English language and got into business, uh, very entrepreneurial like and basically started the company of a very s small office and uh, had the opportunities to start, you know, working on his background with metallurgy, and that was his history and selling tool steels. So he was able to carry on that tradition and start getting into the machinery business at a much smaller scale. So from there, over time, your customers just drove you to do better and started engineering and manufacturing in-house. Uh, so that just led to one thing after another. And uh, 25 years later, I started. And from there, we kind of went to another uh, level of um, professional management and how we grew the business in different ways and kept innovating. And again, our, our machinery is in 35 different countries. So we continue to just invest in the business and our people. And, you know, we're 200 employees strong today here, and we're just in a lot of different industries and doing a lot of things right. But, you know, over the years, we've just continued to invest in our people and do the right things um, with the markets and listen to our customers so in 50 years, you know, that's where we've come from. So putting in ISO over the years and systems and, and building on one thing after another and continuing to focus on our people uh, and innovation has really, you know, helped go, go that mile. But, you know, through those years, through a family business, again, my father being the, the, the founder and still active in the business and uh, very, very uh, involved in some areas that uh, are interesting for us. So, you know, 50 years is something to be proud of. And we're actually having a book written right now about our history and some of the things that we've gone through. And uh, we're proud of that. So, some, yeah, some, it's been some great, great the years. Some great stories and in Canadian innovation. Um, and you talked about Canadian innovation. Um, and you have some innovative project management tools. We'd love to hear about them. So could you walk, them, walk us through them? Absolutely. Well, of course, because of the equipment we're building, it's very complex. And at any one time, we can have over 50 projects. So how we communicate and how we work internally is, is absolutely critical. So we have milestones built in from a process. We go from M1 to M13. And within that, we have stage gates and, and lessons that we, we work on. And we have milestones where we communicate with the customer and engineering phases, where we involve the customer as well in the development of their solution. And it's always critical that, you know, throughout the process, we're communicating on different phases, whether we're in engineering and manufacturing, at what stage is it M8, M9, and testing M11, what's the FAT, factory acceptance testing date for the customer. So our machines can go from 20, 30, 40, 50 weeks out. So how do you manage all those moving parts? And uh, we've done a pretty good job putting those tools in place. And, you know, of course, having the people that are actually working with those tools and uh, working with our customers on keeping them up to date on their project status and uh, how they can also be part of the solution and what we're coming up uh, for them as well. Now, Bob, you always talk about the three P's uh, being the essence of Samco. So in the minute we have left, can you give us a brief overview of those three P's? Yeah, well, quickly, the three P's are people, products, and passion. So the people, of course, is number one, and the part that we're most focused on and proud of is our people, our employees, uh, as well as our customers and our vendors, you know, together, how we do amazing things. Uh, and I'm proud of the fact that, you know, every morning I walk the four corners, we call it. I literally walk around, say good morning to all of our employees. I get to know them, know them all by name. So our people are truly the essence of who we are. And with great people, we develop our products. And of course, innovative products, 
um, are only possible with great people. So continue to innovate in our with our people, uh, with our product lines. And uh, uh, the, the best part of all this, of course, uh, great products are only achievable if you have passion. And you know that's the connection between your mind to your heart and how you work on that together with your teammates and um, people, products, passion. So that kind of defines the three Ps and really how we operate and how we want to define who we are as a company. Yeah, just an amazing story. And I can attest, uh, Bob's a customer of our company and that uh, philosophy permeates through their business. Now we're going to go to break and when we're going to come back, we're going to hear more about Samco Machinery. Don't go away. We're back. I'm speaking with Bob Repose, President and CEO of Samco Machinery. Bob, I know from working at a small to medium-sized business that there are so many amazing stories of our employees. And Bob, you had a great story of one of your employees that you were going to share with us today. Yeah, thank you. Well, I wanted to speak about our one of our star employees here, Jazzwinder, and uh, why I wanted to mention it is just an example of what's possible for many students out there and young young kids that are looking at the field where Jaswinder 36 years ago came over here from India without his family and started sweeping the floors at Samco. And from there, he got into the machine shop and tool and die and uh, into the assembly and testing and started servicing our equipment and so forth and really grew with the business, became our plant manager and then our vice president of operations. And today he's our vice president of applications engineering and working with our customers and really engaged there uh, as one of our key stakeholders here. So just an example of what I really wanted to just tell that story. It's been in Reader's Digest and uh, Jazzwinder and uh, 36 years, you know, you don't have a lot of those employees, but just very passionate about what he does. And he wanted to follow his passion all the way through and, you know, just kept learning and going to school and, and coming up with the trades and, and understanding, you know, that things just change as we go on in our business and got smarter with the technology and uh, continues to be here. So I just wanted to mention that as an example. Well, it's a great story. It's the Canadian success story. And I know manufacturing is specifically small to medium sized business have a ton of those inspirational stories. But Bob, I know that Samco is also great at giving back to the community. So tell us about your special projects. I know you have one that's near and dear to your heart. Yeah, thank you. Well, every year our, our social committee we, works hard on, you know, we want to have fun in our business. And uh, one of our big causes that we work towards is our, is our uh, contributions to Toy Mountain and the Salvation Army. So we have social events every month. We have 50-50 draws. We uh, put on events for uh, raffles and so forth. But what we do is we put our efforts together and we uh, match it as well. So we're happy to contribute uh, to Toy Mountain every year. In the last few years, we've donated ten thousand uh, dollars at each each year. So uh, we're really proud of that, and just giving back to the Salvation Army and the and the Toy Mountain um, event is fun for us, and it's just one of those things that the company really enjoys doing and coming together at that time of year. And you know, people love giving back to kids in need, and uh, we're really proud of that, and we have a fun time with it. So we're just really excited to do Toy Mountain every year, and. Uh, so a good way to put our fun to, together and um, enjoy the success and, and share it with others. And, and it's great to see uh, businesses giving back. I know that uh, small to medium sized businesses are great at community outreach and helping the community along. Um, but Bob, I, we've all faced a huge challenge uh, for the past two years and that's manufacturing during COVID. So we'd love for you to talk about the challenges of manufacturing during COVID and what you did to keep your employees safe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, the first challenge was exactly that, keeping them safe, uh, making sure. And because we were open nonstop, I mean, we did not shut down for one day. We had to keep everyone safe. And, um, you know, hand sanitizers, all the check-ins, temperature checks, splash guards, so forth. So we had to make sure that everyone was protected. Um, but more importantly, we had to communicate along the way. There were so much moving messages and how we did that. So, and because we, we couldn't get together, Physically, we had a lot of virtual meetings. So I would have company meetings virtually and get online and communicate what's happening with the business as well as with COVID and so forth. So I think communication was everything. It's one of our core values is communication, open communication. So we continued to, to do that through virtual technology. Uh, the second challenge we had really was just really servicing our customers on the ground 
you know, we couldn't get out there the way we wanted to um, send them really right into the plants. So again, we went with virtual technology. We could show them things. We could help them on technology for buy-offs as well as some commissioning, but not ideal. We had to manage that. And thankfully over time, you know, we were able to go again across uh, into our customers' facilities. Uh, and the third thing, of course, was just adapting to the business needs and how things changed. You know, things changed so fast. So virtual tours became a reality for our customers, um, the colleges as well. So some of our recruiting efforts were literally doing virtual tours through machines through our machine shop and to show what is possible with the trades um, without actually being here. So that was exciting. Uh, of course, Zoom, every, everybody became a great Zoomer and a team's um, participant. So that was great. And how we did training and so forth as well. That was always a little bit unique and how we uh, actually, um, how we got better at that through that process. And then working from home, of course, that was, you know, something we all had to learn how to do quickly. And some of our engineers, of course, would have to work from home. So just how to, how to leverage that, um, that technology and, you know, do the best you can with what it was and pros and cons to that. But so we had to I, I'm going to stop you there because we have to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to hear more. And we're back. I'm speaking with Bob Repose, president and CEO of Samco Machinery. Bob, I'm hearing from innovators that this is a very challenging time to operate a business in Canada. What challenges have you been facing with manufacturing in Canada? Yeah, well, definitely recently, I think everyone's facing this, you know, supply chain challenges, um, lead times. Lead times are no longer five or 10 weeks, they're 20, 30 weeks. Costs continue to escalate. So, I mean, that's a global challenge in general, but in, in terms of, you know, being in Canada, we also have those limitations on supply chains. And the bigger issue we have, of course, is labor. I think everybody's struggling with just having enough people in the right seats. And uh, we're limited in our growth just by having people uh, available and what we're doing about that. So uh, those would be our maybe our top two challenges. So, Bob, this is the favorite part of the program. When I ask the guest, if you were a politician, what three things would you do to preserve and grow jobs and innovation in manufacturing sector in Canada? So you're on the hot seat. Go. All right. Well, the, definitely the first thing we'd have to do is invest more into our school programs, starting from the high schools into the colleges, into our trades. OK, if we don't have the, the schools available uh, with the training facilities, then we're not going to have the students there and promote that fact that the trades are great. There's jobs there. Uh, second thing, of course, once they're trained, uh, apprenticeship programs, we have to promote more of that. I mean, we're limited and, you know, a lot of our growth is coming through apprenticeship programs, but it's simply not enough uh, from, you know, engineers to machinists and assembly millwrights, there's electricians, there's so many available uh, options there. And, and also with the co-op programs, uh, we just have to have more, more focus on that. It doesn't seem to be growing and it actually seems to be uh, suffering and not having enough focus. And we're seeing actually a reduction in that. So we have to continue to invest in those trade schools and, and really be serious about it. And the third thing is, you know, as a country, we have to continue to focus on our SR and ED programs. Um, R&D investments and how we innovate and um, the programs that the government offers and um, and also things like IRAP. Okay, there's programs out there where you have to continue to innovate, but it comes at a cost and there's resources available out there from a technical standpoint that uh, the government can offer and do a better job with. So uh, overall, I think those are some big things they don't just to promote the jobs in the innovation side of things with the trades. And, uh, and, and, and supporting the manufacturers as we bring the trades in as well. If we bring them in, what's the support we're going to have? Because there is a training process, onboarding and so forth. So how can we do a better job there? Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, manufacturing is a dynamic area. You can have a career in manufacturing and there's so many different segments and we need to promote that amongst our kids. And we need to also make sure that manufacturers stay here. Uh, because otherwise our innovation becomes another country success story. But we have about two minutes left, Bob, and I want to talk to you about if there's any innovations that you would like to share with us today. Yeah, of course. Well, of course, ch changing, uh, changing the landscape with COVID has uh, created opportunities as well uh, in our space with material handling and automation. Okay, people can't come to work. Um, there's machines out there that have to take these large parts and move them. Uh, limited supply of labor. 
So we've now really increased our bandwidth on material handling and automation where the people aren't available. And from a safety standpoint, when the machines are running two, three, four, 500 feet a minute, how do we handle them? So, you know, with automation and material handling, we're able to put these solutions together for our customers in a very engineer to order way. Uh, and of course, productivity. I mean, with, with the automation and material handling, um, you know, there's no, there's, there's no end to that. So in terms of innovation, you know, that's where we're going and a lot of our, a lot of our solutions for our customers. Now we just have about a minute left and I want to hear about how uh, you maintain all of that equipment. Is there a challenge in getting great employees that know how to maintain these uh, automated systems? Absolutely. And you know, you have to start off with when they come in the door uh, from right out of school. Um, the challenge is to, to train them, educate them, give them the skills they need and how you do that quickly. Um, you know, mentor them, be patient. And we're finding, you know, you have to bring them in with the right attitude, the right skill set, and you have to work with them. Um, but it is a challenge. And the things I mentioned earlier, we have to continue to bring the apprentices in and to bring them in from the schools. That's really our solution moving forward. All great stuff. You've showed us a great glimpse into your business, Bob, and we appreciate you coming and joining us on Canadian Innovators. Thank you very much, Jocelyn. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thanks to my guest, Bob Repose, President and CEO of Samco Machinery. I'm Jocelyn Bamford. Thank you for watching Canadian Innovators. If you're an innovator, tell us your story. Write to us at Canadian Innovators at thenewsforum.ca, and we'll see you next time.